going to talk about how to increase agent performance. Again, my name is Bob Stewart. Uh, I play a couple of roles kind of here at Brivity. And one of the roles that I play is working with our founder and, and CEO, Ben Kinney, uh, has a real estate team or expansion operation across the United States. And we're, we're, I think we're over 40 teams now in all the different corners of the US. And one of the things that I do on a day-to-day -day basis is I work with those teams to kind of maximize their, their use of their Brivity platform, but specific to their database and how they're working inside of their database and the kind of things that, that really at the end of the day lead to, to a business. So today we're going to kind of lean on that knowledge and we talk about some of the things that we do. And, you know, a lot of the things we're going to talk about are tools that we have inside of Brivity. So some of you guys are Brivity clients. Some of you guys are not Brivity clients and you're just here um, trying to figure out how to increase your own performance potentially, or maybe the performance of your team. And what we're really talking about here is kind of increasing that, that rate per hour that we earn, right? There's, there's two ways that we can, really earn more at the end of the day. There's three ways, I guess. We could reduce our expenses. Um, we could do more deals in the same amount of time, or we could spend more time in our business. And I think most of us are looking to kind of increase our dollars per hour, right? To do more working a similar, heck, even a less amount of time, right? Then we'd have extra time to go to the, the buffet at the Rio. So I think that there are, there are three kind of main tactics tied to increased performance. There's this idea of a plan and we'll talk about what that means. I think that if you or, or the agents on your team are showing up each day in your business and you have something that you intend to execute that day, that tends to make for, for increased performance, right? You know, I think I'm a football fan, so in a Seahawks one at that, but the Seahawks don't just go out on the field and be like, all right, we're going to, we'll figure this out when we get out there. We've all played football before, right? They have a plan and they execute against it. And, and the teams and the people in this industry that execute against a plan are going to be naturally the ones that, that are higher performers. So we'll talk about a plan. Um, we'll talk a little bit about automation. Some of the things, and this is where we'll kind of be heavy into, into the Brivity tools. Listen, Brivity isn't the only system that has tools for automation, like we're going to talk about, but we will talk about some of the ones that you have at your disposal, either as a potential Brivity client or today you may, you may already be one. And then we'll talk about leverage and, and this idea that there, there's, look, there's a million things as a real estate agent that you could be doing, should be doing on any given day at any given moment. And we want to try to help you figure out like, what are those things that maybe I could have somebody else doing? Um, just as well, if not even better in some cases, yeah, for cheaper than it costs me to actually do it in my own business because um, leverage allows me then to do what? To go out and focus on revenue or income producing activities, right? So as long as I take that time that I'm, that I'm putting the leverage into, right? Let's say it's, it's, you know, cleaning up my database. And instead of doing that myself, I have a somebody else do that for me, I can then take that time and go do income producing activities. So let's talk about a plan. So this is, I mean, really in its simplest form, the business model of the Ben Kinney team. And for you guys not familiar with Ben in 2019, his team, they actually, his team should have been the number one team in the United States, according to Real Trends and the Wall Street Journal. They actually moved his team into what they called the small brokerage category. So in the small brokerage category, he was the third largest, but their team did uh, just over 3,000 transactions in 2019 and are on track to do about 5,000 here in 2020, like COVID be damned, okay? And this is our business model. And on the left, what we have is the agent's job. So when an agent joins our organization, they have a job and they are green before they ever step foot in the door with us that they will do their job. So that's work their sphere. That's uh, two open houses every single week. And that's prospecting. We do 150 dials a day uh, with 50 of those dials being into our database. And then if the agents do their job, Okay, and, and, and they get into production. And for us, what that means is 
you do two transactions, or you, you pend two transactions in two consecutive months. Once you've done that and you continue to do that, you then a couple things happen. You, you can do whatever you want, right? So we've got a plan. And I'm going to talk through Sphere Open House Prospecting. But once you're, once you're executing on our plan and you're getting into production and kind of proving out that you can do this, then you get let into the business, right? You get access to our internet leads that we're paying money for. You get access to leads that come off of our listings, right? And then you may get access to other, other things, right? In some of our markets, we do radio and television advertising. In some of our other markets, we have ISAs that set appointments for people. Uh, we get referrals, especially here in Bellingham, because Ben has a, has a good name around the country for Bellingham, right? So what our business model, and listen, we, we've done extensive webinars where we literally, all we talked about for the entire hour was our sphere and gear. That's what it's called. You could go Google Ben Kinney sphere in gear and, and be able to kind of listen to our plan. But essentially our sphere plan is 63 touches throughout the year. And it looks something like this. We call people in our sphere once a month. We send them a piece of physical mail once a month. That's 24 touches in a year, right? We, we, do, we make a meaningful touch on social media once a month, something more than a like, a comment with some depth. That's 36 touches. We email them two things a month. And it's, that's really simple. We're going to talk about what we email our sphere. That's 60 touches. And then we try to get a uh, belly to belly with our sphere. And a lot of that's through events that we host throughout the year, three times a year. And if you, you cobble all that together, we're getting about 63 touches in with our sphere every year. And, and when an agent joins our team, Jason, I think we do have a sphere and gear around, but um, what, Yes, I, I think there's an auto plan for sphere and gear. We do it a little bit different than a traditional auto plan, but yeah. Um, okay, so that, that's our sphere and gear, right? And that's a plan. We have a plan for agents to go execute against that thing in your business that for most of you guys ends up being where most of your business in a year comes from, right? Your sphere, your past clients, referrals. But we have a plan to execute against that. We have a plan for open houses, okay? That we have a marketing plan around open houses, but the, the crux of for an agent, what they need to do is they need to do two open houses every week. A lot of our agents will do two on a Saturday, right? They'll do one from 10 to noon and they'll do another one from two to four, right? Some of them do one on a Saturday and one on a Sunday. Some of them are doing them in the, in the evenings, but they've got to get their two open houses in every week. And if you do one this week, guess what? You're going to do three next week. And then we prospect and we use Mojo to do kind of our, our bulk heavy dialing where we're doing things like circle prospecting around cancel or a, we're, we're, we're calling cancel expireds, right? Or we'll circle prospecting around an upcoming open house that we might have this week, right? Inviting people or we're circle prospecting around a, a recently listed home or a recently just sold, especially if we had multiple offers, which in this crazy market is on almost every listing we put on these days, right? But we have a plan. Look, we even have a plan for how they work things on the right-hand side, right? We've got a plan, the 10 days of pain. Jason, um, or he mentioned our, our auto plans, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But we have a plan that, that our agents use to execute on any internet leads that they're, they ultimately get to participate in once they've earned their way into our business. Now, short of having a plan, and again, for any one of these things, if you were to go and, and go into to Brevity, go to Google, run the search for Ben Kinney open house, right? Or Brevity open house or Ben Kinney sphere plan, stuff like that. You, you can easily find those resources. Short of having a plan, what you end up doing. And I, I, I faintly remember, Ashley, what this is in this image right here from, from back in college. I can remember this is a gym. And one of the reasons these arms look like they look is because I always felt like whenever I went to the gym and you walk in there and you're not like, you know, you're not 15 years in the business. And, and sometimes it, I don't never know what to do in there. I'm like, oh, I'll do a couple curls, right? Curls for the girls. And, and then maybe I'll do a bench press or two and hope that I don't make a fool of myself and need to like scream for somebody to come get this thing off of me. And then like, if I was sitting on that machine right here, kind of in the, in the front side, I don't even know which direction I would sit necessarily. And that seat looks really close. Like you don't really know what to do 
when you walk into the gym, right? And so you, you kind of do a little bit of this and that, and then you leave after 30 minutes. And it ends up just being like this membership you pay for every month, but you don't actually use it. And I want you to think to yourself, like when people walk in, when, when I walk in each day to my own business and sit down, or maybe these days you just get up from your, from your bed and, and you, you head over to your, your couch to work, right? Because we can't, some of us can't, still can't go into the office. But do I have a plan? Like, am I executing against some kind of a plan every day? And if the answer is no, if I'm kind of letting, letting the winds dictate what I do, letting my email dictate what I do, I'm, I'm probably operating like a gym and where I want to be. And again, I don't know much about this. You can tell, um, but I've heard and, and, and they tell you, right. If they're a CrossFit person, you share this information with everybody. But the cool thing about CrossFit and why it's really taken off and why it has almost this cult like following uh, in the, in the fitness industry is every time you walk into a CrossFit gym, right. I'm walking in it's Wednesday's CrossFit they lay out, like they'll have a little whiteboard there that will say exactly what today's workout is, right? In much the same way that we tell our agents, listen, today what you're going to do is you're going to make 150 dials, 50 of them need to be in the database. And we haven't have a mapped out plan for how they work those 50, 50 calls in the database. The, the performance of our agents, just against, I mean, against the industry average, it's it's ridiculous, right? Our agents on average are doing somewhere between 30 and 36 transactions a year, depending on what area of the country, depending on how long they've been with us. We have agents doing, I mean, heck, we have one agent, Gail, she did 79 transactions, her first calendar, first full calendar year in real estate based on this plan. And oh, by the way, Gail hated cold calling. But one of the things that we do is we and I don't know what, again, not a CrossFitter, you guys can tell, right? But when there's this concept of in weight or in, in working out of like maxing out, right? Where you just, you just try to lift as much weight as you can or you, or you lift um, in order to completely tire yourself out, right? Well, we do uh, things like that, right? We have a day in their first month that somebody joins our team where they have to make a thousand calls in one day, a thousand. It, it, that's a lot of calls, right? But the reason we do that, we, we force somebody to do that. It's painful and it takes a long time all day, right? I think the last person on our team and we have people doing this every week. There's somebody in our organization that's doing their thousand dollars. There was one lady recently it took her 10 hours. I've seen it done in seven, eight hours, but that's, all day on the phone, just circle prospecting, cold calling essentially. But once you've done that, 150 in a day, no problem, right? Our people are doing that in somewhere between an hour and two hours, depending on how many people they get on the phone and talk to that day. This idea of having a plan so that when you show up, when your agents show up at the office, they know what today is going to be. And more than that, they know what a win is today right? At a CrossFit, like when I walk into the gym, I don't know, did I win today? I'm not sure. Was that enough curls? I don't know. But at, at CrossFit, some expert has said, look, if you do this, if you do these 50 burpees, or I don't know how, but these box jumps, these, these rope twirls, or again, not a CrossFitter, right? That's a win. We want you to run your, your, your business more like a CrossFit gym than just a regular gym where you're having people show up and they're kind of looking around and twiddling their thumbs. And Okay. So for, for, and this has been a thing for a long time in our business, right? Once people kind of earn their way in, right? After they've done that, the heavy lifting of real estate, the, the working their own sphere, the, the open houses, getting on the phone and just, and just calling people, they're going to get access to leads. And if you don't have a consistent flow of leads into your business to augment these other things that your agents are executing against on their plan, right? You're, you're, if it's not consistent, you, you get this, these inconsistent results, right? If you don't have a consistent flow of leads, your agents don't get in a routine of how to convert those leads. So if you have a lead coming in every now and then, maybe from organic sources or a little bit of marketing that you're pushing out yourself on Facebook or something, right? 
your team, yourself, your agents, you don't get into that consistent flow. On our team, it's the 10 days of pain and agents know they got to show up every morning and we do prospecting time from nine to noon because I know I'm going to have leads in there that I need to call that came in yesterday. Now those leads are already getting talked to and we'll, we'll talk about that in a minute, but I need to have a constant flow of leads to my world. And the reality is, if you think about you know, what you do each day in, in your business and where your money is really made. Your money is made belly to belly on the phone and maybe we're maybe in texting, right? It's, it's made in the, in the attempts, the communications that you have with those people in your database. So if you're spending time each day, personally, going out and, and doing ad campaigns on Google or Facebook or wherever to try to drive leads, is that the highest and best use of your time? Look, maybe you love it. Maybe you love the idea of, of spending two or three or five or eight dollars to get a lead into your business that could turn into a $10,000 paycheck. Don't get me wrong. I can understand how that could be, you know, intoxicating, right? But is that the highest and best use of your time? Would it be better use of your time to be on the other end of that as they come in calling those people and trying to get them set up to, to get out and see a house or, or to get into their house to, to give your amazing listing presentation? I don't know. So we, we have leads at Brivity. We do leads. We lots of different types of lead programs. One of my favorites, by the way, and this gets into like, we're starting to move towards automation, right? You want to be able to automate that idea that there's, there's leads coming into your business, right? You're not worried about it. You're not the one trying to figure out what, well, how did I just spend $200? I didn't get any leads out of that campaign. Like, and if you didn't pay attention to it for three days, all of a sudden you spent 600, you didn't get any leads. Like you're not having to do that. We handle that. But th right here, remarketing is this idea. We could take um, your database, okay? Or we could take people that have come to your website and we can go out and we can follow those people around the internet. And if they, if they lean to the right and they go to Fox News, we can follow them there. If they lean to the left and they go to msnbc.com or, or the Washington Post, we can follow them there. If they go to the Wall Street Journal, we can follow them there. If they go to the Bellingham Herald, my local newspaper, we can follow them there. On Facebook, we can follow them. We can follow them when they're out of there. When they, I mean, really anywhere they go on this thing, their phone, right? If they're playing Candy Crush at night or Clash of Clans, whatever their, you know, their drug of choice is, we can follow them there too. Okay. And what happens in this, there, there's a few things that happen out of our remarketing campaigns, especially the ones we run inside of Facebook where um, we're, we're looking at what people are doing on your website. And then we, in, inside of Facebook, we're serving back up to them listings similar to the ones that they've been looking at. And if they started out looking in Bellingham at three bedroom properties, they're going to get properties served up to them of similar um, ilk in Facebook. If they move and they're like, you know what, Bellingham's too expensive. We're going to move to Blaine. And they start looking in Blaine on your website. Cool. We're going to start reinforcing to them inside of Facebook properties in Blaine. Everywhere they go, we're going to reinforce your brand. We're going to attempt to drive them back to your website. And here's what we find on, on our Ben Kinney team. First off, we find it drives people back, right? We have higher return visitors. We've got more kind of daily web traffic when we're running one of these remarketing campaigns than when we're not. The other thing we find is people say stuff to us like, like when we call, it actually makes our calling and our texting campaigns more effective because they see us everywhere. They will even say stuff like, I see you, oh yeah, yeah, oh no, I know who you guys are, I see you all over the place. Or they'll say stuff like, you guys must spend a ton of money on advertising, I see you everywhere. And the reality is they do see us everywhere, but we don't spend a ton of money on advertising, we just spend the right targeted money on advertising. We are simply following them. They think we show up on the Washington Post to everybody, right? They think, we show up on Fox News to everybody. We don't. We just show up to them or, or other people in your database, other people who've been on your website. So this is a highly effective kind of, it, it makes you more efficient and effective because that brand recognition, it makes those calls easier. It, it make you get more responses. You drive more of those people that originally come to your website back to your website. So that you can be there over the course of nine to 12 months. And in some cases, it's two years, right? From when they start thinking about buying or selling, many of them don't do it for nine to 12 months. That, in, that's the sweet spot. 
you got to figure out a way to stay in front, to stay top of mind, to make them want to answer the phone and say something like, I see you guys everywhere. We do that through our, our remarketing campaigns. All right. So once those leads come in, right, our teams um, and, and our Brivity clients are using auto plans to automate lead follow-up. There's all kinds of studies out there about how many times you need to, to communicate or attempt to communicate with a lead before that sale happens, right? By the way, it's way out on like the 12th to 14th uh, communication attempt that you actually make that connection. There's also all kinds of studies about how fast you need to respond to these leads and responding to a lead inside of five minutes. You're like 30 times more likely to, to, to reach that person than if you respond after five minutes. So our auto plans, what they do is we can trigger them automatically. So let's say we get a lead that comes in off our website, comes in off Zillow, comes in off a Facebook campaign. When it hits our database, we can trigger an auto plan to fire automatically on that lead so that if your agent is out having dinner with his honey bunny, and I love to go have dinner with my wife, right? You could be at dinner with your wife, lead comes to your website, and immediately that lead's getting a text message from you saying, hey, I saw you on my website looking at properties. Are you thinking about buying? Or maybe you're thinking about selling and you're curious what your own home is worth. Which one are you doing? And we've crafted these auto plans. In fact, if you're a Brivity client today, you could get the Ben Kinney team 10 days of pain. We give it out to everybody. You can just reach out to our support team. They make sure you have the latest, greatest version. You can share these auto plans amongst Brivity users. Heck, if you're not a Brivity person and you're like, oh, I really love the system I use and it does have these auto plans, but I'd sure like to get my hands on Ben Kinney's 10 days of pain. Fine, reach out to me. I'll give you our 10 days of pain. I can really easily share it with you if you're a Brivity client. It takes me one click. If not, I'll just take the PDF and I'll give it to you, right? And you'd have to copy it into your own system. But what these do is they, they set tasks for our agents to do things, right? Again, giving them a plan of how they execute on the leads that we generate for them. So even sometimes when we're using automation, it's to deliver a plan. It's to give our agents a plan, right? They also have texts inside of them that go out automatically. They have emails that go out. And when, they, when the person responds, they respond to our text, it's gonna pause that plan. And now we step in and take over, right? But we didn't have to be the one there jumping on the, I mean, we still call, right? But we know every single lead that comes into our world is gonna get something from one of our people in the first three minutes. Three minutes after that thing registered, the first text is going to go out to that lead. It, it makes our agents massively more efficient because we can manage and follow up with a larger pool of leads. Now, we, like I said, we, we, we still got to call them, right? So inside Brivity, we use our Brivity dialer to set up call sessions where we can call 50 people at a time. We basically load up in the index who we want to call. We check them, check them off. We hit dialer. It calls our phone once. We, we answer. We put our headphones in, hands free. And then it just starts dialing through. It's a single line dialer, so it'll dial the first person in that list. Then, then when you're done with that, it'll dial the second person. It'll dial the third person. Jim, do me a favor. Email me at bob at benkinney.com if you want that 10 days of pain auto plan. I can absolutely send it to you, my friend. So... And then I remember I mentioned we have a plan and part of our plan for our agents is they have to make 150 dials every day and 50 of those dials need to be into the database. So a lot of times they'll use this. Might be they, they're going to call all their past clients, right? We do something called batching where it's like on Mondays, we call all our past clients. Tuesdays, we call people in our sphere. Wednesdays, we call all the unqualified leads. Thursday, right? And we batch these things up. So when I'm in there for sphere day, I just load my sphere up in the, in Brivity, put them in order by who I haven't talked to in the longest. And then I run a dialer session on them and I'm calling through and it's making me much more efficient. Even if I'm saving, let's say I'm saving 30 seconds every time I'm going to make those calls. That's 25 minutes I save in a 50 call session every day. Let's just round it up, call it a half hour a day, right? What are, I'm saving two and a half hours a week. Is that like, what? On 30 seconds on each call saves me two and a half hours a week if I made 50 dials a day. Like, what could you do with an extra two and a half hours? Look, maybe it's spend more time with my kids, right? Maybe it's 
you know, make it to, to, to my son's soccer game. Like maybe it's half of it goes to the family and half of it goes back into me doing another hour of prospecting in my database. But when you start to think about these little incremental savings and how much they add up over the course of a week or even over the course of a year, oh my goodness. Like this is staggering. It's staggering, right? Jessica, I actually have a, Jessica, they're having some problem with their brevity numbers. One of our teams figured this out recently, Jessica, um, reach out to me, Bob at Ben Kinney. I'll give you the, I'll give you the lowdown on how to make that better. All right. Next. So I mentioned we've got a plan, right? And a lot of the automation, the things that we've put in place in brevity are to help us execute against the plan, right? So if the plan is, Hey, we got to do two open houses every week. Well, we got to have open house forms, then pages, on my website, right? That I can pull up on my iPad. I put my iPad out. We use little, these little stands you can buy on Amazon when, when we do our open houses, right? But we get this form, this open house sign-in form that keys off of our website for the property that we're actually out at, right? We get this form there. So when they log in, they walk in, we, we give them our open house script. Hey, thanks for coming to an open house today. People normally come in for one of two reasons. They're trying to find that perfect house for them or their family, or they live in the area and they're curious what their own home is worth. Which one are you guys? They're gonna tell us, I'm a buyer or I'm a, I live in the neighborhood and I was just scouting out to see what this house looked like so I can try to maybe figure out what my house is worth. Then we're gonna have them sign in. And when they sign in, it's gonna feed that information into the database automatically, right? It's gonna tag them appropriately. It's gonna set up a listing alert so that we start to send properties every day out to them that are similar to that property that they visited, right? These are all automated things. We don't end up with a, with a sign-in sheet at the end of the day that like a week later I find under my car seat. I'm like, oh, there's where that thing went, dang it, right? We have auto plans hooked up so that when an open house lead comes in, auto plan gets applied automatically and a text goes out two hours later from the agent says, hey, thanks for dropping by our open house. Did you guys have any questions now that you've had a, a couple of hours to, to think about it? If they reply, awesome, plan stops. If they don't reply 15 minutes later, hey, I promised the seller that I'd asked everybody that came through this question. And I can't remember if I asked you guys, did you want to make an offer on this house? Patty says 150 dials a day sounds crazy for a solo agent. How many of those actually pick up? It depends, Patty. I mean, you're probably on the low end, you might get 15, 10 to 15 people pick up, right? On the high end, it might be 30 to 45. So a lot of those calls go unanswered. And it's, you know, you might go 10 calls in a row, Patty, where it took you two minutes, right? And nobody answered or three minutes or four minutes and nobody answered on 10 calls in a row. You make it three in a row where they answer and you've got, you know, you're having two minute conversations or maybe you get a really good one. You end up in a 15 or 20 minute conversation. So like I said, the, when they get better at it, they're using the dialer effectively. They are doing them in an uh, hour and a half. My mom is a real estate agent. She hated doing the dials when she first started on the Ben Kinney team. Um, she's actually the one that sold 79 houses in her first year in real estate. She got used to it. She did it. It, it was the foundation for her, for her business. Right. So it, it's here. Here's the thing, Patty. It's only crazy till you've done a thousand. When you do a thousand in a day and again, some of them takes seven or eight hours. The, the most recent lady took her 10 hours, but 150 for her now. No problem, right? Because she knows she can do a thousand. This is all about like mindset. A lot of what we talk about in our world is mindset. I mean, 150 a day is, is crazy. If it, if it sounds crazy to you, it's crazy. When you've done a thousand, then that 150 doesn't sound so crazy. All right, so open house registration pages. Again, this stuff all works together. We, we have lots of stuff that's automated, right? A lot of that stuff that's automated is to support our plan. We do virtual open houses too. This is a thing. Some of you guys still probably are in California. Like you still can't do regular open houses, right? In some of our counties here in Washington, we still can't do regular open houses. In some counties we can. So we, we give you the ability, we give you these pages where you can go out and market and promote a virtual open house that you're going to host on Thursday night at eight o'clock. We can get you, we can help you get people signed up for those things, right? We give you the tools for you to go out and promote that virtual open house.
Patty says, can I follow the Ben Kinney plan if I'm not a Ben Kinney team? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, I, 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 there are sphere and gears out there for anybody to be able to go and, and kind of figure out what we're doing. I briefly explained it earlier, right? The 150 dials a day, absolutely. Anybody could do that. Patty, I, you have a conversation with me one day and I, I, I'll spend a half hour, an hour at the end, really break down like, what do we do? And, and although we're talking about it right now. All right, so um, listing alerts. I mean, this is one of our automation tools that we are just uh, religious about, right? Like we are fanatically religious about, like when we have a buyer prospect in our world, they're going to get listings from us. If they're in our database, sometimes, sometimes you like come across the lead in your database. Some of you guys have hundreds or even thousands of leads like this, where you're like, I don't even know where that came from. I don't know. There's no source in here. We've gone, this is our third system we've been in the last 10 years. I don't know where this lead came from. I don't recognize this name. There's no notes in here. I don't, I don't know. There's a name and an email and a phone number, but we just start sending them listings, you guys. If, if Gail's business was in Olympia, Washington, she's going to start sending listings to this random lead for Olympia, 250 to 400,000 go. Now, a lot of times, right? If they came from Zillow, Awesome. We're going to send them listings. If they came from Dave Ramsey, we're going to send them listings. And if they came from our own website, we're going to send them listings. If they were looking at one of our listings on Facebook and, and signed up on our website, we're going to start sending them listings. In, in all those scenarios, we generally know what were they after, right? They were looking at a home in Bellingham at 300, excuse me, 300,000. Cool. We're going to start sending them listings from 250 to 400. But we send listing alerts to every lead from day one right away. We don't wait to talk to them. Over, I've been doing this for 19 years. One of the things, is that right? Yeah, 19 years. One of the things that, that we've learned in, in, in you know, two decades of doing this is, and listen, we've run all the, all the plans, all the drip campaigns. So we, we've, we've hired people to write ones for us, like really good writers, right? Because we were never that. What, are the, what we figured out eventually is uh, buyers, want to see properties, right? I mean, Zillow is proof, by the way, that even when they're not buying, they want to, they want to look at properties. Like we have 5 million homes sell in the United States every year and Zillow gets like 15 million or 20 million or whatever crazy number it is, visitors a month. People just like to look at real estate. There's something kind of intrinsic about that. I, the, the dreaming of looking at real estate. And so we just send everybody listings, right? Well, if they don't want them, they'll unsubscribe. They'll tell us to stop. Sometimes, though, they start replying and they say stuff like, hey, we're not looking in Bellingham. We're looking in Blaine. Or, hey, can you not send anything with two or three bedrooms? We just want to see the stuff with four or more because we got a bunch of children. Or sometimes they just don't say anything. They just come back to our website. And when they come back to our website, we can see that activity happening in the back of our database in our CRM. So we call them. This is uh, in 19 years, single-handedly, easily, the most impactful thing we've ever sent. Our, our market report tool, the open rates are three to four times anything else we've ever sent. The response rates are, are really high. We get come list me emails from these. If you were to go into our Brevity Masterminds group, which you can't get into, by the way, unless you're a Brevity client, but our, our clients are all the time kind of sharing their success stories from their market report responses. Like in an effort to encourage anybody else who has Brevity who hasn't set all these things up to get them set up. But if, if you're a past client of ours and we know your address, if you're, if you're in our sphere and we got your address, right, where, where, that you own the home at, or if you're a seller, lead, prospect, right? And you're in our database and we have your address, you are getting a market report from us. Now I mentioned earlier, we send, when we were talking about our sphere and gear plan, right? Email, we email our sphere twice a month. We used to send a newsletter and then one email a month where we tried to like send some one off, like personal email to them. Hey, Sally and Jim, I saw this article in the Bellingham Herald about the youth soccer program. And I know Jimmy's doing youth soccer. He's, this is going to be his first year. I'm so excited to, to come see a game at some point. Here's a, the cool article the Herald wrote up about it, right? We would do that. And that took a lot of effort. 
Today, we just send marker reports. We send them every two weeks. So they get 26 marker reports from us a year. It suffices for our, it satisfies our two emails a month to our sphere or our past clients, part of the sphere and gear plan. See how this stuff all works together? The automation, the plan. But what, what is a marker report? It's basically, so we can do it based on an area around their home, like a radius around their house or their address. We can go in and draw on a map the area we want to send them the report for, or we can just do it based on a city or a zip code. In some areas, even like a community, like in the city of Seattle, you could do one for Wallingford, the community of Wallingford. Once you set it up, what it'll do is it'll send them, here's all the active properties right now inside of that area. Here's all the pending properties inside of that area. And then here's all the sold properties. And if your MLS allows it, which most of them do these days, unless you're in a non-disclosure state, but even in some non-disclosure states, like the Austin MLS still gives us sold details. We'll actually show them what's sold in the last 30 days and how much did it sell for versus what it was listed for. So we get to have conversation with our clients. Like we're calling past clients and saying things like, Hey, Jim and Sue, how's it going? Just checking in with you guys. Well, listen, I noticed that you were looking at your market report recently. Did you guys see that house in your neighborhood? Ooh, that was a good comp for you guys, right? They listed at 605 and they ended up getting 630. Like, wow, that's, I know you guys aren't ready to sell right now, but when you, when, when you ever think about it, you know, once the, the boys leave for college, right? That's going to be a really awesome comp and your, and your neighborhood's looking really great. By the way, there's no other houses for sale in your guys' neighborhood right now either. It's all pendings and sold. So when stuff does go on the market in your neighborhood, whoo, it sells fast for over, over ask. Yeah, Jason's given us some like some feedback. These things are, are really powerful. Think about, nobody wants to like, <laughs> there's, there's different ways you can send market data to people, right? Or, and, and today, and we could do this. We've got all this data to be able to deliver this on your behalf. We could send out estimates of what their home is worth and each month show them that home value going up or down or whatever. I think when you do that, like you're never going to get it right. Those algorithms, those automated valuations, the person receiving it is always going to be like, no, nah, my house is worth more than this. So instead, we just show them the data. We're just like, look, I'm not, I'm not sure what your house is worth. If you'd like me to figure it out, we can figure it out, right? But I just want to show you what's happening in your neighborhood. When we've been sending somebody one of these, you know, every two weeks for a year, two years, all of a sudden they're like, okay, I think we're ready to sell. Like we saw what the neighbors have been getting. They don't come to the table with these preposterous ideas of what their home is worth, right? That, it's not, we don't get situations. I mean, you still get them. I guess they're super rare, right? Where somebody's like, you know, I, I saw my neighbors all sold for 600,000. My house is worth 900. I want 900. Like they, they can see over time what the value of their home is. Yeah, J Jason says it's the easiest call ever. Yeah, oh, I say <laughs> when, when, it's, when the number's not right. Yeah, it, it is an easy call, but it, it also builds something. It builds a defense up in that person, right? This guy doesn't know what he's talking about. He, let's just give him the numbers. That's what we do. We just give him the numbers. We give him every two weeks. Zillow literally stood up in the middle of our industry, you guys, because our MLSs didn't used to allow us to send this data out. So Zillow came in and went, they looked around and they were like, oh, we'll just go get this information from county assessors and we'll just compile it on this website where people can come and see what their neighbor's house sold for. And then we'll give them this BS number about what their house is worth. And, and they just stood up right in the middle of our industry with data that we should have been delivering to our clients, but for years we couldn't, but now we can again. Yeah, Don, I told that she said, these are real, real market reports they can trust as opposed to a estimate, right? Like this is the data from your MLS about what's selling. It's the same data the appraiser is gonna use to decide you know, if, if the bank's going to give a loan on that, on that property for that amount. Absolutely, Don. All right. Brevity Go. Um, we allow your agents, right? Like a lot, of, a lot of the activity that your people are doing with the folks in their database is happening while they're out on the road, right? It's happening while they're standing in line at the grocery store and they're like, oh yeah, I wanted to text that one lead about it's happening while they're waiting at an open house for the next person, next visitor to walk in. 
right? It's, it's, it's rarely, unless it's that lead gen time where we have our plan that we're going to sit down from nine to noon and we're going to be in front of our computer. Most of the time you are on the road as a real estate agent. You need to have a, an app. You have something on the go on your phone so that you can record, take action on all those things inside of the database that you need to do, right? All right. I don't know how you guys do CMAs today. There's some tools out there, right? So your MLSs have tools for you. We've got a pricing tool. We use the 555 method of pricing properties where we pull data from your MLS. You can go in and say, here's my subject property. Here's the types of homes that I'd like to comp it against. We pull in those types of homes. Then you just pick the five active properties that are most similar to your subject property, the five most uh, closely associated pendings, and the five solds that you'd like to use in that comp formula. And then we've got an, an algorithm where we just press out a number at the end of the day off of the comps that you pick. This is what we, I mean, we used this tool to do, I don't know, I mean, we did 3000 transactions. I wanna say, I mean, it's right around 50%, I think we're a little bit on the higher side, but um, you know, at least 1500 listing presentations last year, we won walking out with our Brevity CMA. It's how we price properties. Now look, we've got videos on Ben delivering like how we actually then introduce that to the client, right? How, how we go, how do you even use this thing? This, this is combined with the market report, right? They've been getting all this market report data from us and now they raise their hand and they go, hey, um, you think I could get what the neighbor guy got? And we go, I don't know. Just like Jason said, I don't know. But when I come out to your house, I'll let you know, right? And then we do the CMA for him and we show up for the listing appointment. Now, once we take the listing, we, use, we call this Brevity Marketer and it generates postcard campaigns based on, you, know, you put that listing in the MLS, we get the fact that you've got a new listing. We just create a postcard campaign. Now it's a templated thing that you can go in kind of in the very beginning and set what you want your template to look like. But once you take the listing, boom, We've got the campaign ready. You just go in and basically say, who do I want to send this to? And it's even as easy as you just saying, how many do I want to send? We will actually, we can, it's one of the options, right? You go in and draw on a map who you want to send it to. You can even pick things like, I'm going to want to send to people that, that bought their house seven years or more ago. And when they bought it, they bought it for 200,000 or more. Or you can let us do, we have an algorithm that just goes out and says, all right, your listing is one to three Main Street. What we're gonna do, if you wanna send 200 postcards, we're gonna send it to the, the 200 homes around one to three Main Street that are most like your property where the property profile and the owner profile are most similar based on data that we've collected from, from the internet, right? These big data sources. So we're not gonna send your postcard to a, a house three doors down where they just bought three months ago because we know they don't, like they're, they're, they're just in their house. They're not going to sell again for, for a while, right? We're more likely to send it to the house five doors down that, that they bought their house seven years ago. We do the same thing with just solds. So either it's a, you, you just listed a property, we can run a campaign for that. You just sold the property, we can run a campaign for that. Now you can also run your own custom campaigns where you just go and you upload an image that you want us to fire out on Marketer and so there's multiple ways that you can use this Brevity Marketer. But again, it's just, if, if direct mail marketing is ever something you wanted to try or it's something you've been using, but it takes you a bunch of time and you use this service and you got to create each postcard and we can, we can streamline that process, right? We can make you more efficient. All right, the last, so we've, we, a lot of that was automation, right? A lot of things we can put in place, right? Auto plans and market reports and listing alerts, right? The dialer is, is kind of helping with, with making a higher volume of phone calls, right? These are all kind of elements of automation. And you saw a lot of those elements of automation supported the plan, right? The different parts of our plan. The last way that you can increase your productivity is through leverage. Leverage. Now, that could mean hiring a, a, your first admin person, right? That could mean a virtual assistant. So on Brivity, we've got Brivity, it's called Brivity VA, where if you're, and by the way, you don't have to be a Brivity client to use Brivity VA, but our VAs kind of out of the box are trained in using Brivity. 
So they know how to do things like set up all the listing alerts, get the auto plans in place, get market reports going for all your, all your seller prospects. We even use market reports, by the way, on buyer prospects. If a buyer's looking for homes, like if we're sending them a listing alert in federal way between 300 and 400,000, we also then send them a market report for federal way between 300 and 400,000. So every day they get the new listings. And then once a week, we're like, hey, here's what's happening with those listings we've been sending you. Uh, that one that you saw on Monday that you really loved, that one's sold now. You should have reached out to me. Sorry. Right? It's pending. So it's a super effective strategy for us. Anyway, we have virtual assistants go in and set those things up. What, what are some of the other things that are VAs, some of the other leverage points? And really, I, I'm a firm believer in this. Mostly or one of the main reasons I'm a firm believer in this is because I've had a virtual assistant working with me for the last five years. His name's Noel. I've actually had a couple, Karen, Noel, and Sheree. These are amazing individuals. They're, they're a part of our Brevity VA team. They weren't at the time they started working with me. Um, we found them from another company and, and they subsequently would come over and, and, and work with us, right? But these people, the, these amazing individuals who are based in the Philippines, I would put any one of the three of them on the phone with any one of our clients, and I have, right? I, I would be 100% confident that Noel could, could craft written emails and, and blog posts and things like, like, they were, like I did them. And I would have no problem letting him send an email on my map. Like he, he is a top-notch performer. So it's my belief that if I can do it on a computer, a virtual assistant can do it. Now, there are certain you know, what, what's the, there's certain knowledge, right? That I know Noel doesn't have and I don't expect him to have. But process type stuff, things that we do repeatedly in our business, right? A lot of that stuff can be learned. And listen, we have virtual assistants all throughout our world that have been long, with us longer than Noel and Sheree and Karen have been with me, right? We've got people that have been around for, I think our longest standing VA has been in our business for seven or eight years now. On the real estate side, her name's Eris. She's amazing. We, we use them to manage our transactions, to help manage our transactions, to help manage the marketing. And um, they, they, they market our listings. They're, they're reposting our listings on Craigslist. Yes, we still use Craigslist. Yes, we still get amazing leads from Craigslist. Yes, we still help sell houses to people that found us on Craigslist, right? They, they post the stuff on Active Rain and the blog and they're, they're making sure our listings are getting posted on Facebook. And, you know, they're kind of running this marketing engine behind the scenes that we you know, that we kind of put into play every time we take a new listing, right? They're the ones, we've got this concept inside of Brevity called advertising plans, where when you're managing your transaction in Brevity, you can go out and you can show your seller all the places that their home is being marketed, right? Now, the, the secret of that is it's just all the places the MLS sends it, Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, Redfin, Windermere, uh, Remax, Keller Williams, all these places your, your listings go, well, our VAs go in and make sure that our sellers know where all those places are, right? Our virtual tours, you know, what our, our YouTube videos we do, like whatever it is, right? They create all the listing collateral for our agents. If our agents need a flyer because they're doing an open house or, or um, you know, the different kind of different social media type posts that, that we give to the agents to go out and promote stuff or that the agent then gives to the client to go out and promote their homes for sale, We've got virtual assistants creating that sort of thing. They update showing feedback for our sellers. All this stuff is stuff that needs to get done. Somebody got to do this, this stuff in our business, right? So either you're doing it and think about like, like this is a great example, like update showing feedback for the sellers. What is the, what is the dollar per hour value of this? Is it generating revenue? I mean, you can maybe in your brain like get some twisted, you know, math formula to figure out how this does generate revenue. Well, it makes a more happy seller. And so then the sellers might tell their friends. And I think this is worth, the reality is anybody can do this. Anybody could take that feedback that got left at the listing and like enter it in to the, to the portal so the seller sees it. They support our open house marketing and execution, right? They make sure that, that all the things in our open house plan, by the way, that's a plan that we just have built into Brivity. So every time we're going to do an open house, we just apply the plan and all the tasks that the, that the VA needs to do get assigned to the VA. 
systems and models. We have a plan for pretty much everything. And when we don't, we try to go build one. And the reason we have the time to do that, to work on our business instead of in our business, because we, we leverage a lot of the things that need to get done. And I get it, guys. This is a crazy business with like multiple moving parts every single day, all the time, right? The people that build really big businesses, the people that, that, that make, you know, really good dollar per hour in this business, they figure out leverage really, really, not always soon. They just figure it out at a really deep level. They figure out what things they shouldn't be doing and somebody else could be doing that they could pay somebody else to do for cheaper. We've got VAs that go in. A lot of times we'll get leads that are incomplete, right? Especially if you're getting seller leads. A lot of our seller leads just come in with an address. That's okay. We've got VAs that get out on Ben Verified or Spokio or some of these different places and they go track down names, emails, phone numbers. They set up listing alerts and market reports for all of our leads that are coming in. So our agents on our teams, they all, like literally they, what they need to do is call. We've got auto plans that text and email. We've got VA setting up listing alerts and market reports for these folks. All they need to do is get in there and pick up the phone and call. Like they're massively more efficient and effective because of this. This even trickles down to things like our agents have time to do script practice every morning because of all of the leverage we've created for them, right? And their script practice so that when they go get on the phones, they're, they're more confident in that script. They're delivering it. They know who they're going to call with that particular script, right? This stuff all like, I would call this, compound interest. These little things all put together, compounding over time. This is why Ben's built the business that he's built. All right. We got five minutes left. So let's see what kind of questions you guys have. I see some coming in here. Listen, if you're interested, so if you're a current, well, if you're a current Brevity client or not, you might be interested in some of the things we spoke about. So if you're curious about our leads program or, or again, one of my favorite kind of aspects of our leads program, our remarketing or retargeting stuff, we call that Brevity Connect, by the way, but um, you can pull your phone out right now and you can text need leads to 59559. So just that phrase, need leads, who are you going to send it to? You're going to send it to the number 59559. The body of the message is going to say need leads. If you're curious about a VA, so again, you could be a Brevity client or maybe you're not, but you're like, you know what? Like, I think I'm at the point where I shouldn't be doing all this other stuff because it's bogging me down. And so my life is this series, my real estate life is this series of peaks and valleys. I'm on the roller coaster of real estate. I, I get four deals this month and I'm so stinking busy trying to close those things out and do all the paperwork and all that that the next two months I have zero and one. And then Don, if you want to text platform to 59559, um, somebody can reach out to you about the Brevity platform. So the, you know, I touched on a bunch of elements of the Brevity platform, auto plans, listing alerts, market reports. There's lots of things, Brevity marketer, the postcard tool, there's many things I didn't talk about. Brevity Designer, for example. Brevity Designer can do brochures, Greg. Ashley, by the way, there, you can do brochures in Brevity Designer, um, which is a part of the Brevity platform. That's okay, Ashley. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of deep in there, but there is some kind of print options in there where you can actually do like eight by 11 type print things. Now, is it, well, I mean, with the ability to add text and to add images, you can almost make any kind of a, you know, anything you'd want in there. It, I would say though, it's a kind of an, an advanced user option, but yeah, there, there is the capability. Heather, I'm going to, she just asked the same question somebody else asked earlier. Is there a temp, is there an auto plan for sphere and gear that we can have access to? Uh, here's the, here's why the sphere and gear auto plan, uh, there's something around. Okay. But here's why we don't, necessarily have like this developed one kind of ready to go. You think about the things that happen. Let's say I had a hundred, a hundred people in my sphere, right? And let's say that the, the thing I want to do, the, the task in the auto plan was call them. If I knew I was going to call my hundred people in my sphere once a month, 
Does it make sense for me to set a hundred reminders, one on each person in my sphere, and then have to go in, call them, clear the reminder, and then do the next reminder? Or does it make sense to just set a reminder for myself that on the 15th, I, I, I call my hundred people in my sphere? So we've always struggled a little bit about with creating these auto plans for the sphere and gear that says, go call everybody in your sphere. Like, 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 like here's a task for each, each hundred people. The, the efficiency there is way less efficient than if you just said, look, I know the sphere and gear, I need to call my people once a month. So I put something on my calendar to call my sphere, right? I put a, I put a task inside of Brevity that's, that gives the directions of how I go pull my sphere up in Brevity. And then whenever that task comes due, I just go in and, and, and run a dialer session on the people that that, that does. Anyway. Yeah, Jason, the, the action plan sphere and gear was before we had the market report stuff. So I think there was like emails in there that were meant to go out, but we don't do any of those emails anymore. We just use the market report. So maybe, maybe the next plan that Jolene and I will work on is we'll figure out how to get the sphere and gear kind of into an auto plan. That might be a really good. Um, did Pimwadi had a question about can a VA create turnkey marketing material like ads and brochures? Um, it would depend. Like when you get these VAs, they're trained in, in brevity, but they're not necessarily like trained graphic designers, right? Pimati. So, I mean, you get to interview them and you get to pick out. So you could like in the, in the kind of pre-interview phase, when you're talking to Greg and our team, who's going to go out and find you the VAs that you get to then interview, you could say, hey, I'm looking for somebody with some design skills because I want them, you know, I'm going to be really kind of relying on them to go create brochures and stuff like this. Um, so I wouldn't say that they would always kind of come to you with, with these kind of that next level of skills kind of beyond brevity. Um, but yeah, if you're talking like, Pimati, you have the, the template or whatever, and you're like, I just want them to be able to do this every time for my listings, absolutely. Like if, it, if you have a system built already, look, our, a, a VA that you get with us is going to be just as smart as any person you could potentially hire, right? I mean, um, so if, if somebody can do it, they can do it. I, again, that's been my experience with Noel and Cherie and Karen. They're I mean, Noel like runs my act, active rain support department. He is active rain support. And we've got, I mean, it's a big job. He's a really smart guy. He's been with me for five years. All right. So listen, it is the top of the hour. I appreciate you guys hanging out with me for, for the last little bit. If you have Bob at benkinney.com, I threw a bunch of stuff out. So if you're like, wait, I want that plan. I'm a brevity client. Like I need that. You have questions. You can always email me at Bob at Ben Kinney. You guys have a, have an awesome rest of your week. Thank you, Ashley, for always being here behind the scenes and, and um, you know, answering everybody's questions. And thanks to Mikey and Samantha, who are the people that kind of invite you guys and get you here. My name's Bob Stewart. You guys have an awesome, awesome rest of your day, an awesome rest of your week. We will see you guys very soon in the future. Bye-bye, everybody. <laughs>